Happy Homebrew Wednesday, folks! Ryan Patrick Murphy here, drinking a little homebrew. Good old speckled heifer there. Hmm. Good stuff. Good beer. Uh, got something in the mail today. Thought we'll just start off with this a little, little discussion on uh, faucets, which leads right into what I got in the mail today. Um, let's see, got a little uh, kind of brush plug thing for goes into the end of your faucet. I'll show you how that works in a minute, I guess. I mean, you could probably guess. And I got a couple of uh, these things here. I haven't even totally unwrapped it yet. This is a uh, stainless steel. Perlic keg, uh, kegerator faucet. Okay, this is all stainless steel. I made sure to get uh, stainless steel. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a cheaper model. Um, it's uh, polished chrome. This was on sale for forty dollars, and I, I got two of them. You're probably wondering, well, why would you replace your faucets? Well, it really wasn't too big of a deal. But with the non perlic style or branded faucets, like uh, this one, this is actually one that came with it, right? This this handle will come off, it'll, it'll go on the other one. But um, with this style, with the little dent here that comes in now as you pull on it, right? Um, if you go, let's say you just served, a, you served up a beer and then you don't have a beer for a few days, what happens is the beer starts to dry up around here and then when you're going and trying to pull it gets stuck well on my kegerator with how the tower is attached there's not a whole lot holding that tower on the top of that kegerator so when I'm pulling the whole tower is coming with it okay eventually you know I can get it to where it finally will slide open but you know I don't want to eventually someday that thing is not going to hold so I decided to replace this with the Perlic, which does it has different insides on it. So you're saying, well, those don't look too much different. I mean, you can see some obvious differences there. So um, there's a, the functionality is different between two a little bit. So let's let's take this. This is the old standard one. A lot of people have. You know, if you have like a, a keyser set up with a a collar, you know what? This type would probably be just fine with it. You're not going to bust anything probably. So we're going to take the handle off here. Um, you know, not too different. I mean, they that part pretty much functions the same. And then you will take this off. And th this part here, my understanding is this helps you if you, if you have like another tap handle, like I have a, a summit one, like right about there. <laughs> um, you want to get on there straight. Well, you don't always get on there straight if you have it tight all the way down. So this helps you tighten that on the handle on there. So that's kind of nice. Well, get, well, it helps you uh, tighten it so you can get the handle straight. So, you know, you have the logo facing the way you want it to. So, and both of them have that piece, of course, but once we take this guy off, if things start to change a little bit. Oh, there's more than I realized. So, you know, it's just kind of this little kind of peg thing in there. Okay, so this came right out of the top. And this is actually, not only does that help move what's inside, but it also... Uh, holds what's inside in there. So let's pull that out. Okay, so we can see this is the mechanism. This is what generally was plugging the hole of the beer and then when you pull it open it gets goes in enough that it lets the beer out. So the beer is going around this thing and so it gets stuck. It, it's just what happens. It gets stuck. So, pretty, so you see, pull in, out, well, beer should be coming out there, beer lines closed. Not too complicated, until I screw this up and can't get it back together. <laughs> so, put that back on there real quick. Like, okay, well, what's different about the other guy? 
The other guy operates totally different, a little differently. I mean, it's still pull forward, push in, but there's on that one, there's just a little ball inside there, okay? There's a lot less service here. So you pull out, that ball opens up. There's very little contact between that ball and the rest of the mechanism. You know, it's enough, it plugs the hole. So even if there's beer there, it's not a whole lot for it to get stuck on. So we take that off. I mean, it's all pretty much the one piece once you get the two screw pieces off here. Which I probably don't need to take this top part off, but I did before, so. You know, this also, taking it apart like this will help you get, we need to clean it. So it's, this is a little fa way fancier. So this should come out. There we go. Wow, that's pretty solid. So it's just a little ball. That's it. A little metal ball. Uh, there's a there's a gasket inside there that it pushes up against. So that's all that pretty much keeps the beer from pouring out. So that is that. Uh, I got kind of lucky with this glass of beer. There was just enough left in there to fill the glass. I took a couple sips and was like, you know, I'd really like to show this other faucet. I, I'm fairly certain that keg's about to blow. So I, you know, took a couple sips and then poured again and it, I blew the keg. Although I did get a little upset because now there's a problem with the keg. Not because of this, I mean blowing it, not because I blew the keg, but there's a problem where now the poppet for the gas line doesn't hold gas anymore. I mean, I pulled up and I just had CO2 blowing in my face. I'm like, what the heck? And I pushed down on it and it would stop and it would come back and it would just be blowing out CO2. I never had that happen before, so hopefully I can fix it. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hard time. <laughs> Might have to go get another keg. Really, I probably won't have to get another keg. Just most replace the the poppet, maybe, or maybe just need some keg lube. I'll, when I take it apart, I'll figure it out. I'd like to actually replace the posts on that one. Um, you know, that that was a keg I got for free from a good buddy of mine. Well, I didn't get it for free, but uh, there was a trade involved. Um, so back to. So this little brush guy. So when you got a beer, maybe you got your keg, and you don't want to, um, you know, you don't want somebody to go serve serve themselves something because you know it's not ready. You can just pop that in there, you know, and it plugs a hole. Or maybe you got things sanitized. You just don't want to mess with. You can just plug it up. And you're good to go. And that fits in the Perlix. I imagine it fits in all of them. Yep, see? Yep, it just fits right in there. So, that is that. So, I get install this, I guess, but... I mean, this will end up being installed in stages, apparently. Where I'll have one, I'll have one faucet on one side until I empty the other keg. Um, so, it's going to look kind of funny, but that's alright. It'll make it a lot easier to use, and that's really what I, you know, I want it to be easy to use. I don't want to have any problems, so I'm taking care of it. And uh, my buddy Brett's Brewery has these on his, and he's been very happy with his. It sounds like so I should it should work pretty well for me. Oh, man, you could definitely tell that that beer was running out. I mean, it is clear in this thing. So, beer updates, brew updates, what do we got? We got Oktoberfest is going into, or it's on its second week of fermentation. Um, I haven't really checked it all this week to see how it's doing. I'm going to probably just put in secondary and begin lagering this weekend. The rye pale ale is in its about second week. Or is it? Yeah, second week of... Uh, keg conditioning uh, naturally primed it so when that's ready that'll go in the place of the speckled heifer but fortunately it's not ready yet and I don't want to put it in too early that should be a pretty good beer to have though um, oatmeal uh, cookie brown ale still in the keg I need to fill some bottles from that keg I have not used the last straw yet I had to actually go and replace my distilled water for my star sand I tried to use a, a filter tap water. That star sand got cloudy and cl got super cloudy. So 
I need to dump that out. I, I still used it for uh, the next beer I'm going to talk about here. But, uh, it's, uh, you know, I know I can get some pH strips and test the acidity and all that, but I, I don't know what I did with my pH strip, so I'm going to take the Claudia as a bad sign and just go with it and... You know, and it may be, it'd probably be fine. I, I don't know, but I don't want to take any chances if I don't have to. You know, you spent a lot of time brewing, you don't want to take a chance of ruining because you thought you were sanitizing things and you weren't. Um, the Surly Bitter Brewer went into secondary a couple days ago and. It has been dry hopped. I tell you what, those Surly kits, they like their dry hopping. Two and a half ounces of Glacier. Uh, glacier. <laughs> um, so, that's always fun. Um, I've actually switched where I am fermenting in the apartment here. I used to do it in the spare bathroom right here, but I decided I kind of wanted to you be able to use the bathroom there instead of going the other side of the apartment which really wasn't a big deal before but it's like I got the second bathroom I might as well use it for a bathroom um that's all I got really uh, I got the White House Honey Porter back there which I've shown I think previously uh I'm thinking about brewing that this weekend or else I'll do the Brit Dave's British Bitter which I've done a couple times before uh recipe ingredients are back there too um, I think that just about covers it for this week. I, oh, I am working on a brew video for the Oktoberfest. Um, I want to get through all the stages of the process with this one. Uh, it's, it's taking a little bit of work. Um, I haven't even started editing it yet because it's, the process isn't done. But, you know, I might get all the way to before I get it tasted or I may put the tasting in there. I haven't decided on that. Which, if I do it on the tasting, I'll probably be a month and a half away at least. Otherwise, I may just try to get the video out so I don't forget to put the video out. And it uh, should be pretty good. So, cheers everybody. Have a happy Homebrew Wednesday. We'll see you next time. 17. <laughs>